All right, Luke, it's all under control. No, I mean, that's very optimistic from, uh, uh, from Derek. And I, I, I entirely understand why those people arguing for Brexit want to see uh, a removal of all those barriers and want to see only good things from it. But the reality is that a no-deal exit will potentially see our boats tied up after 48 hours because there's simply not enough capacity in the, in the export industry to cope with the delays and the, frankly, avalanche of red tape that we're going to get with Brexit, the new catch certificates they need to file, the new export checks, the new environmental mental health checks at borders, the queues at borders that we're potentially going to get, it is a bit worrying that the minister responsible for this area seems so uncertain about how uh, shellfish from the southwest, one of our most ex important uh, export products, is going to be received when it goes uh, to our export markets in only a few weeks' time. This is deeply worrying, and I'm, I'm simply of the view that government hasn't done enough to prepare for a uh, no-deal exit, and that we're not prepared for the consequences of that. And that will mean boats being tied up, livelihoods being put at risk. No matter what the Kool-Aid and the Brexit posters say about this, fishing stands to lose immediately from a no-deal Brexit. Well, I think fishing's a bit more complicated than that. And one of the diff difficulties we've got is there's not one fishing industry in the southwest. There's a number of different fishing industries that all catch different species with different export markets with different uses of them. When fish are landed, that's right, many of the, that's, the, that's the conclusion of the trade for many of the fishermen because they've landed their catch, they've sold it onto the next stage. What happens from the fish at that point there, the, the live shellfish that might be exported, the fish that goes for processing or the fish that goes to export, that really matters. That's where any delay at the borders, which the government is predicting there will be delays at the borders uh, under a no-deal exit come into it. And I'm really concerned that we're a few weeks away from a no-deal exit, potentially, uh, where the preparations aren't in place. Now, I hope that a uh, deal can be got, and I hope that deal can be put to the people, but I won't simply vote for a bad deal simply because it's got the word deal in it. I think there's a pattern that's emerging here, whether it's on fishing or farming, it looks like we're not ready and the Brexit that on offer looks pretty rubbish. And that's really worrying because that's also the same story for automotive, for aerospace, for financial services, for our major parts of the economy. Now, when it comes to this, I think the idea of uh, trade and tariffs is something that, frankly, most people in Britain haven't really been engaged with. It hasn't been a feature of British politics for many decades. And so we haven't really had to worry about whether there's tariffs on uh, trade with Europe or not, because there haven't been, because we've been part of a free market and a customs, a single market and a customs union. But now there is, the effects of that need to be understood. If we have taxes, which is what a tariff is, on the goods we export, it makes our goods more expensive, it makes it uh, more, less likely that people will buy them, which means we'll earn less money from it, which means we'll have less people employed in that sector. That's why this matters. And that is why the NFU uh, and other organisations are raising some quite valid and serious concerns with ministers here that I think have just been dismissed out of hand. Well, I don't think it involves all of that stuff, but it does involve tri quite transformative change. And I think politicians need to be much more honest about it. Even net zero by 2050 requires a huge amount of change to avert catastrophic climate change. But we need to do that anyway. You know, climate change is real. It's affecting us here in the West Country. It's certainly affecting uh, countries right around the world for, due, due to change in climate, changes in crop production they can have. And it's uh, directly affecting our national security through uh, population movements uh, across the world. So we do need to deal with this. Now, that means we need to take more... Uh, affirmative and bolder steps. What does that mean in practice? In practice, that means people. we need to stop the producing diesel and petrol cars. We need to uh, end the use of those cars, which means we need to roll out a massive infrastructure of electric vehicles. We need to remove not only the final bits of coal from our, uh, from our national grid, which is where the majority of their carbon emissions reductions have come from so far. We've, we've only really done it from energy production. We haven't done that from housing or transport. We need a massive rollout of renewable energy, which means building uh, um, uh, offshore wind uh, as Labour's been announcing this week, uh, new, 37 new wind farms with the profits reinvested in coastal communities. But we all need to do things differently. And this is where I think the honesty really matters. Because it's fine saying that Steve Double couldn't get to a restaurant to have his meal that he wanted. You know, that disruption is, you know, inconvenient for a Member of Parliament. You're blocking sure he... two bridges to one of London's biggest hospitals as well, as you well know, because we know, both know the area very well. Indeed. And the other side of the bridge was entirely uh, free access. And, you know, the access arrangement adjustments have been put in place by all the emergency services in London. So it's a good line, but doesn't quite carry through. There's people that are really angry about the climate emergency. And as we saw, 
saw from the clip for the Prime Minister, he mocks it. He hasn't really made any announcement on climate change since he's been elected as Prime Minister. What he's done is failed to respond to the climate emergency that Parliament has declared. And the challenge is a clear one. What are you doing differently since Parliament declared a climate emergency? Boris Johnson is doing nothing differently apart from mocking those people that are concerned about it. That's not a good enough answer.